I'm going to stop right now. Hello everybody, it's I, Brian Tuffy, and today I'll be reviewing the film that kicks off the summer movie season. Also one of my most anticipated films of the year, even though I wasn't like super pumped for it. This film is, of course, The Amazing Spider-Man 2. This film is once again directed by Mark Webb and stars Andrew Garfield, Emma Stone. It also stars Jamie Foxx, Dane DeHaan, Sally Field, and Paul Giamatti for about... Five minutes. In this film, Peter Parker loves being Spider-Man. He keeps protecting the city. You know, he he does everything that Spider-Man does. He helps people. He's also having the troubled relationship with Gwen Stacy. He just graduated high school. He's just thinking about what to do. And when this guy, Max Dillon, played by Jamie Foxx, accidentally falls into a pool of electric eels, he becomes electrical, and basically we have our story. Now, I've grown up with Spider-Man, I love the comic books, I don't love every film, but I'll give you my quick opinion on each film. Spider-Man, one of course, I think it's a very entertaining movie, I think it's one of the better superhero films we've had in the recent years, I give it an A. Spider-Man 2, what else can you say about Spider-Man 2, it's great, A+. plus. Spider-Man 3, not a terrible movie, there are some good things about it, C-. minus. And The Amazing Spider-Man. A decent film, not the greatest reboot, but it's not terrible. B-. And so, what do I think of this movie? Well, before I get into how I feel about the movie, I'm just going to tell you one thing. The trailer spoiled everything. I found that out after I saw the first film. And I realized since, when the sequel comes out, don't watch every trailer. You could just watch the very first trailer, and that's it. And I did. I watched the very first trailer when it came out, and... I avoid literally every trailer. Every time a trailer came up in the movies that wasn't the first trailer, I literally just like closed my eyes and it was like this. And every time a commercial came up, I would just turn away or just cover my eyes. So, overall, how did I feel? I really enjoyed this movie. I didn't love it. But there are so many good things and there are just a few bad things. I do think it's better than The Amazing Spider-Man. And I knew that going in, okay? I just wanted to have an entertaining film that kicked off the summer season that wasn't terrible yes there are some bad things about it, but let's get to the positives first first off i gotta talk about the acting andrew garfield has proved that he is a perfect perfect spider-man slash peter parker he does the comedic scenes well he does the action scenes well and mainly the dramatic scenes he is such a good actor and i want to see him in more stuff that isn't just the social network and spider-man he really needs to be in more stuff emma stone was great again their chemistry was so good together. They need to be a couple in real life. New additions, Jamie Foxx as Electro. I felt for his character before he became Electro. And I really like Jamie Foxx a lot. He's one of my favorite actors, and he was very good in the role. Anyone could have played the role, but Jamie Foxx was so cool. And just the way he looked with the electricity on his face was so cool. Dane DeHaan as Harry Osborn. I really liked Dane DeHaan. I liked him in Chronicle, Place Me on the Pines. Dane DeHaan was pretty good as Harry Osborn. The visuals, the visuals are so good. They really are. You could tell, yes, there are some CGI in the movie, but it's so well done and perfect that I just... It's fun, okay? Look, is this movie going to be perfect? No, some people might think it's perfect. I didn't think it was perfect, but I didn't think it was terrible. I really had fun with the action scenes, and Mark Webb really did a good job filming all the action scenes. Hans Zimmer's score to this movie is better than James Horner's music from the last film. Nothing against James Horner, he did compose Titanic. Like I mentioned before, the colors are gorgeous. The movie is so colorful. The last one was so dark. There was like nothing. In this one, it's so colorful and just really, really cool. Now let's get to my problems. Like I said, Rhino's only in the movie for two minutes. It, that's just not good, okay? The movie makes it look like there's going to be three villains. My biggest problem with this movie is definitely the narrative structure. There were so many subplots... That just didn't work for me, in my opinion. But that didn't ruin the movie for me. It's just that some of them did not work. Some of them were just eh, but there was none that stood out, in my opinion. And also, there's a Philip Phillips song in this movie. Why? Nothing against the song, but just why? And also, for those of you who've seen every single trailer, including the first one, the last shot, literally, the last shot is in the trailer. And commercials. Every damn commercial and every damn trailer, they show the last fucking shot of the film. What? Let's move away from all the negatives and just get to my grade. Overall, The Amazing Spider-Man 2 is not a perfect movie, but it's a very entertaining movie that kids and adults will have fun with. I had fun with it. 
it's a decent kickoff to the summer, but I can't wait for Godzilla and X-Men and hope those movies are great. I'm giving this film a B. I enjoyed it for the most part. It had really good action scenes, really great acting, just a fun time in the movies. And if you're looking for some fun, go check out The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Alright guys, that is my review of The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Tell me down in the comments below what's your favorite superhero movie and what do you think of the Spider-Man movies? Rank them. If I had to rank them... I would rank 2, 1, this one, Mason Spider-Man, and 3. Please subscribe to my channel, Brian Sefio, if you're interested. Thank you all for watching, and see you soon.